Hi guys! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a little chunky bee. And this bee is extremely small and extremely adorable and very easy and beginner friendly. So I hope that you enjoy this tutorial and I would love to see pictures of your little bees. Um, if you would like to post them and tag me on Instagram or email them to me, I would love to see that. But I hope you enjoy this tutorial and let's get into it. The materials needed to make your chunky bee are a darning needle, a yellow and a black yarn in a worsted weight or a four weight yarn, a white in a three or a sport weight yarn. Optionally, you could do this in a four weight yarn and it wouldn't really affect it too much. A 3.5 millimeter um, hook or the hook size of your choice, a stitch marker, and scissors. Optionally, you can also choose to do some really little safety eyes. Otherwise, you can just use your yarn for the eyes. For the purposes of a tutorial, I'm going to be using orange instead of black today for our bee. Um, this will also create a nice little Halloween bee, but the reason that I'm doing it is because black is a difficult color to see your stitches on, even in person. And the purpose of a tutorial is for you to be able to see what I'm doing and uh, be able to pick up on it. And I want to make sure that you can see what I'm showing you and see the stitches well. So I'm not going to use black just because it is a more difficult color for you to be able to learn with. Okay, so to begin, you will be using black. Keep in mind that I'm using orange instead of black. And you're going to start out with making a magic ring. If you don't know how to make a magic ring, I have a tutorial in my description box where I go through the process of how to make a magic ring and I slow it down for you. So once we have our magic ring, we can remove this tail from our circle and there is our completed ring. We're going to be putting six single crochets into our magic ring. So to do a single crochet with your one loop already on the hook, which doesn't count as anything, you're going to go into your magic circle and grab that um, working yarn and pull it back through. And you'll have two loops on here. You can yarn over so you have one more and then you're going to pull that new one, that third one, through the first two. And this right here is your single crochet. You'll notice you have a little bit of a V shape with um, the top of the stitch. And if you choose to use a stitch marker, you can go ahead and put it on now. And you're just going to slide it under both of those so that you are under the V shape. And that is the top of your stitch. And you can go ahead and lock your stitch marker into place if you have a locking stitch marker. And then we're just going to put the five remaining single crochets worked into our magic circle. So two, three, four, five, and six. I want to take this time to remind you that if this is too fast for you and you need it slowed down at any point, uh, you can click the little gear shaped um, icon that is somewhere around the video screen for you. Um, it depends on what you're watching from, where exactly it's located, but somewhere along the top or the bottom of the screen, of the video screen, there will be a little gear shaped icon that is a settings icon. And if you pick the, or if you click that, you can choose the playback speed and you can slow it down for yourself and it will slow everything down for you. If you put it at like a 0.75, um, that'll probably be good, but you can set it to whatever helps you. So after we have our six stitches here, one, two, three, four, five, and six being the one that's on our stitch marker, if you chose to use a stitch marker, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna pull the tail to begin to close up our magic ring. You don't need to pull it tight yet, you can leave it with a little bit of a gap. And we're gonna take this stitch marker out of our first stitch, and you can just set that aside for the moment. 
Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to increase, which is putting two single crochets into each stitch. Um, so something that I want to make note of is make sure you're not accidentally grabbing your tail at this point and using your tail to do your stitches. Uh, make sure that you're holding your working yarn. And we're going to go in to that first stitch. And we're going to work a single crochet. And then we're going to go in and we're going to work another single crochet into that same stitch. Now if you choose to, you can go ahead and put a stitch marker in that first stitch that we just made and lock her into place. At this point you can go ahead and you can tug on your tail to close up this circle in the middle a little bit more. The reason that I um, choose to wait to do that is to make sure that I can get into that first stitch um, on the next round without any struggle and sometimes tightening up your magic circle um, before then makes this first stitch kind of disappear a little bit. So you'll see we have two stitches now and we're going to have 12 in total after we put two into each single crochet from the previous round. So we're increasing all the way around. So go ahead and just place two single crochets into each stitch all the way around. And if you don't have a stitch marker, you can keep count of your stitches by just uh, counting, you know, one and putting two stitches in it, two, put two stitches in it, three, put two stitches in it. And that's a good way for you to make sure you go into all six stitches. Okay, and now you should have 12 stitches in total and you can count those real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve where our stitch marker is. Um, and don't worry if you see your magic circle opening up a little bit, it will kind of do that at the beginning. Um, it won't do that as you continue the project. So I just go ahead and give it another tug. And at this point um, we are actually going to switch to yellow. So with this last circle, or this last single crochet, we are actually going to, for the last loop that you pull through, we're going to switch to yellow for a color change. Um, and you can do that while, while making your single crochet, or you can choose to just undo that last little loop, put the two back on, and then go ahead and put your yellow on. So to do a color change, we're going to make a slip knot with our yellow. And go ahead and put that on our loop or on our hook and that's going to count as our third loop that you normally pull through on a single crochet. We just tighten that onto there. And holding on to both the orange and the yellow to keep our stitch tight. We're going to go ahead and pull that yellow up and through and that gives us our new color change. Now something I like to do when I'm doing a color change is I'm going to go ahead and grab these two, um, the yellow tail and the orange that we're currently working with and I'm going to tie them into a little knot just to secure the color change nicely. And uh, this part that's up right now is going to be the outside of our work, so you can just kind of flip it and um, do your knot so that the tails will be inside, and then you don't even have to worry about weaving them in. So I'm just going to throw a little knot in here, and you don't really have to do this, but I figure, um, you know, extra security is never a bad thing. Um, and then you can go ahead and continue. And we're going to be using the yellow yarn for this round. So you can go ahead and take out your stitch marker. And this is a really simple round. We're just going to be doing a single crochet in each stitch around. So you don't even need your stitch marker um, for this round because you'll know you're back to the beginning when you get to this yellow. But if you choose to use your stitch marker, you can go right ahead and put it into that yellow stitch. And that is your first stitch for the round so that you'll know for sure that you're back at the beginning. And then go ahead and place a single crochet in each stitch around. Three, 
four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. and 12. So uh, you'll notice that your B is starting to cup up now. Um, that is totally fine and that is what you want. So I'm just gonna give one last little tug on my um, center, my magic circle down there. And I feel like that's nice and secure now. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip this so that the cupping is facing the other direction. Um, because I want to make sure that the outside of my B is facing outwards. And you'll know that this is the outside um, because your magic circle tail will be on the other side. So once you've went ahead and flipped that, we are going to switch back to black. And remember, I'm using orange instead of black. So we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to grab our working yarn in our um, black. And then we are going to come to this last stitch of the round and we are going to just pull out that one loop or like I said you can do that um, originally you don't have to pull it out you can just do it while you're crocheting that last stitch we're gonna yarn over with our black or orange in my case and we're just gonna pull it through so that we have our color change on our hook then we're going to go ahead and take out our stitch marker and we're going to crochet into the first stitch with orange or black. <laughs> and if you would like to, you can go ahead and pop that stitch marker in there. Now you'll notice that we have quite a little um, mess of tails going on right now. Don't worry about that. Um, we're just continuing to carry our yarn up inside the B for the color changes. We're just single crocheting around now in black, by the way, or orange if you're using orange. Um, but the tails can actually stay inside the B because they won't be seen and they can add a little extra stuffing. Um, so we're just single crocheting around in each stitch. Once again, we don't need to do any increases or anything. And when we come back around, we're going to go ahead and put our eyes in. So if you have safety eyes or if you are doing yarn eyes or embroidery thread eyes, uh, go ahead and grab those after you finish this round and meet me back here. Okay, so I've got my safety eyes, and to make this a little easier, I'm just gonna take this stitch that is currently on the hook and pull it so that our loop is nice and big and not gonna slide out easily on accident. And I'm gonna set my hook aside. So to make it a little bit easier to work into here, I'm gonna go ahead and also remove my stitch marker because I know that the next stitch is the first stitch of the round when I come back, and just kind of tuck these tails off to the side and out of the way the best that you can. Then we're gonna be looking at this side and you can decide on where you would like your eye placement to be. So what you're gonna do for your eye placement is you're just going to kind of feel out what you want the um, shape of your bee's face to be. And to be honest, this bee is so small. Um, if you're doing safety eyes, there's really not a whole lot of room to play around with where the eyes will be um, because they barely fit into the bee's face. Um, so it kind of decides for you. But you can kind of look at it, um, look at your shape, and see if there's a way that you prefer as the top or the bottom. And then you're just going to go ahead and put this end in through one of the stitches. And you're going to put the other end in 
going to do the same thing over here um, parallel to it and I'm sorry that my finger is in the way but it's such a small small bee that my thumb just covers the whole thing um, and you can play around with it until you're happy with it and once you have those safety eyes where you would like them to be be <laughs> You can flip back inside and you're just going to find the backs of these little safety eye posts. Let me make sure you're focused here. And you're going to take your safety eye backs and you're going to face them with the larger side facing down. And you're going to just push them down. And this part can be a little challenging on such a small bee um, to get your fingers in there into the size that you need to. But you're just going to push those down until they click. There we go. So when you get them past the first rung, um, they will secure in between those two pieces um, because they are kind of, if I can show you here, um, the safety eyes backing or um, posts are kind of um, ribbed and so the safety eye catches on that and you want to push it down far enough that it goes past that and catches. There we go. I did that one much better, much quicker. And then your safety eyes are all attached. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of room to... Um, <laughs> decide where to put your safety eyes no matter which way you face your bee or how you put them on they're going to basically be in the same place um so normally i would tell you you know go to this specific row or whatever just as a recommendation but for the bee um you really only have one place to do it and they're you want them to be parallel so basically you're just kind of trying to set them up in a way where they're going to be nice and parallel to each other and once you have your safety eyes in, we can go ahead and flip back around, insert our hook back into our working yarn. And same as before, we're gonna come to this last stitch and we are going to switch back to yellow. So find your yellow working yarn, which is the yarn that's still connected to the ball. And we're gonna actually um, slide this out again and take this last loop out, putting these other two loops back on our hook. And we're going to yarn over with that yellow and pull it through. Make sure you give like a nice little tug on that orange and on that yellow so that your stitches keep being tight and go ahead and work into the next stitch. And we are just going to be doing a single crochet all the way around again. So if you choose, you can go ahead and put your stitch marker in to this first stitch. And then go ahead and single crochet all the way around. Okay, so at this point, we are going to go ahead and take the yellow and black or orange, depending on what colors you're using, tail. And now that there's enough body, we can go ahead and stuff those down into the bottom so that they are out of our way. Um, and alternatively, you can trim these if you prefer. Just make sure you don't tuck your working yarns down in there. And then we can actually go ahead and trim our yellow working yarn because we are finished with it. And what I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and do the same that I've done for all of the other color changes. And I'm going to go here and take out that last loop. Let me make sure you're focused. 
and put these last two loops back on your hook and yarn over with your black or your orange in my case. And we're gonna pull through and that will be our final color change. To secure the yellow, I'm gonna go ahead and tie my black or my orange to my yellow on the inside of the B. I'm just gonna do a double knot. And I'm gonna tuck that yellow tail down into the bee's body. Okay, and we are going to actually do a row of decreases this time. So before we really start doing our decreases, go ahead and grab, I would recommend some yarn scraps for this, but you can use polyfill if you want to. The reason that I would recommend some yarn scraps for stuffing this is that it is a very small um, thing that you're stuffing and you really don't need very much. So I find that the yarn scraps are just a little bit easier to work with. So I'm just grabbing some yarn scraps and I'm gonna um, pull my hook so that my loop has a little bit of slack to it and I can take my hook out. And I'm just going to start to stuff this and we're gonna continue to stuff this as we go around if we need to with our last row of decreases. So yeah, you heard that right. This is a very small B. We are already finishing the body. Okay, so I think that that was enough yarn scraps for now and I will put in some more um, as I go probably. I'm gonna go ahead and put the um, orange back on or black in your case and to do a decrease we're doing an invisible decrease so the way you do an invisible decrease is you see the top of your stitches here and they are shaped like a V instead of going into the whole stitch you're only going to grab the first loop of your stitch and separate it from the second loop and hopefully you can see what I'm talking about with all of the yarn scraps sticking out. So you're going to do that again for your second loop. You see your V shape there. You're only gonna go through the first one. And so you're gonna have two loops um, of, your, of your single crochet right there from the two single crochets. And you're gonna have your loop from before and you're just going to yarn over and you're gonna pull through both of these. And that's called a decrease because we are connecting together two single crochets into one stitch. So we just got rid of two single crochets, but we actually only have one stitch. And you can go ahead and you can put a stitch marker in there if you'd like to. So we currently have 12 stitches in this round and we're going to have six when we get to the end of it. So we're just going to decrease all the way around, grabbing the first loop of two single crochet stitches, but not the whole, not the whole stitch, just the front. And that is called the front loop of the stitch that you're grabbing. And the one that we're leaving is called the back loop. And then you just finish it like a single crochet after you pull through. Um, you basically do a single crochet, but you're only doing it through um, the front loop and you're doing it through two stitches instead of one. And when we get to the end of this round, we will have six stitches and we are going to be sewing the end of our B closed. 
So if you have um, more yarn that you need to put in, um, you can go ahead and put that in now. I might actually be good. I don't think I'm going to need any more yarn in there. So I've got two more stitches that I'm picking up the front loop only, yarning over and pulling through both, and finishing that off. So this is what our B is looking like currently. And what we're going to do is go ahead and take our stitch marker out, double check to see if you need any more stuffing, and you can just stuff this with your fingers, or if you need to, you can grab um, something to kind of stick the stuffing in with. So I have um, this little stick that comes with polyfill, and I'm just going to see if I need to stick any more stuffing down in here. Honestly, the bee really holds its shape so well that um, you don't necessarily need stuffing. But I prefer to always stuff my projects. Sorry about that. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and we're just going to chain, which you do by yarning over your hook and pulling um, through the loop and just pull tight. And then we're going to go ahead and cut the working yarn, leaving a tail leaving a good length tail to go ahead and sew the end of our B. And we're going to pull this so that we pull this loop out and give her a tug. And we're doing that because it creates a knot and neatly ties off the end of our yarn. So now at this point, we're going to put our yarn on the darning needle. And what we are going to do is, once again, we're going to only be grabbing the front loops, just like we were doing um, with our invisible decreases. Um, grabbing just the front loops with our darning needle and pulling through, but don't pull tight quite yet. We're going to go all the way around into all six stitches with only the front loops. And once you find yourself back at the beginning, you can go ahead and pull tight. And that's just going to close up that bee's butt for you. And now you will notice you don't have a hole anymore. Making sure you're focused there. Uh, and you can go ahead and take your tail now and you can just kind of sew around a little bit to secure it in and also to um, if you'd like to shape it in any way then this is a good opportunity for you to get the shape that you want. And you're just going to go back and forth a little bit until you are comfortable and happy with the shape and also with the security of your tail. And then we're just going to go through and pull our darning needle out at a different point in the B and pull the yarn until it is all the way inside and secure. And then we are going to go ahead and cut our yarn. And we are done with the bee's body. Now to um, hide where you just took your yarn out or there might be a little spot, um, you can just kind of massage around and the little tail piece that was there will be gone. It'll just kind of suck itself back in. So we have our little bee's body. It is so tiny. It is so adorable. Mine looks like candy corn since I did it in orange and yellow. Um, and yeah, so we can go ahead and we can move on to our wings. Alrighty, and now that we are working on our wings, we're going to switch to our white yarn. And we're going to use the same crochet hook. And this is going to be really short. These are very small and easy. We're just going to make a magic ring. And once again, if you need help with your magic ring, then that video is linked in the description box for you. Once you have your magic ring on here, we're going to just single crochet six stitches into our magic ring. One, two, 
three. Four. Five. And six. And once you have your six stitches, you can go ahead and count them if you need to. And you can begin to pull your magic circle closed, but remember, don't pull it super tight yet. And we're just going to single crochet into that first stitch. And we are going to be working um, increases all the way around again. So there was one single crochet into the first stitch. And there is two single crochets into the first stitch. We're just going to work two all the way around into every stitch. So second stitch. And there's two single crochets. Our third stitch. And there's two single crochets. Fourth stitch. And there's two, fifth stitch, two single crochets, and our sixth stitch, two single crochets. Now you can go ahead and give your magic circle a tight tug because we are done. That is literally all we do for the, the wing. So when you give that a nice tug and you're happy with it, you can go ahead and we're going to end this with a slip stitch. So we're going to yarn or go through and yarn over, pulling up the loop like we would for a single crochet. But instead of yarning over again to pull through both, we're just going to pull that second loop through the first loop. And then we can go ahead and cut our yarn and leave a nice tail if you're going to be sewing your wing to your bee. And you can go ahead and pull on that and then give her a little tug and that should secure it nicely. The next thing that we're going to do before we call our wing finished is we are going to put our yarn on our darning needle. And we are going to work this um, ending tail so that it's not on the top on the edge like that. We are just going to work it through to the back because this is the top. And once again, you can know which side is the top because that's the side that your magic circle tail is going to be coming out of. Um, and then you can just kind of go under some of the stitches back here and get it next to this other one, next to your magic circles tail. And you can go ahead and you can tie those in a little knot. And this will be the yarn that if you choose to sew your wings on with, that you will be using to sew your wings on with. You also can hot glue or super glue or fabric glue or whatever your um, chosen method of attaching the wing is. We are going to go ahead and we're going to make a second one of these. So if you need, you can rewind the video and watch how to make it again. But it is just a magic circle with six single crochets in it and then a round of increases. So you'll have 12 stitches when you end and then just slip stitch off. And that is all you have to do for the wing. All right, and there we have it. Here is your tiny chunky bee. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Um, I would love to see your finished makes if you want to post them on Instagram and tag me or you want to send it to, the, to my email. My email is always in the description on my videos. Um, I really hope that you enjoyed this and you found it helpful. Please leave a comment and let me know if you made this. Um, and if you really enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. That way you know when I come back and I make another tutorial. I also make lots of different yarny content if you like that kind of content. But until next time, I hope you have a great day and that you stay safe and happy crocheting. Bye guys!